Okay, fellas. Oh, I don't know, fellas. I just get mm, maybe a little bit too much um, newspaper sales. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, he's got a spot colour. But, uh, you know, because it's got copper in there, you know. Everyone says copper's so deadly. The um, Liverwort seems to be, looks, I don't know, I just get the impression it's a little bit better. So I'm just wondering whether the Liverworts actually grow on the sugars that come off the cellulose, which means that do they, do the Liverworts follow the moss that grows on the limestone? Because me and my Russian friend says, you know, you do know that um, yeah, liverworts grow on limestone. And I'm thinking, well, what do you mean by limestone? Do you mean like it's a stone that's green in colour? Or do you mean it's a stone that classic used to make l classic lime? I mean, well, what do you mean by limestone, you know? You know? And of course, then we've got uh, differences in words chalk, different spellings, agricultural chalk and things like that. And so on and so forth. It's a little bit confusing. So, um, the other thing I was thinking about, you know, I forgot to mention, I think, is um, the newspaper cellulose is a, is a, you know, it's a, it's a bank for the moisture, basically. It's a acting like a sponge in a way. So, it's, it, I'm thinking it's, it holds onto the water, but probably lets the gases go in a way. So, um, the story of the sponge. <laughs> um, yeah, so... So maybe a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do today is I'm getting some some of this, which I I did four handfuls last night. Put the hot water in it just to make sure we'd have enough. And I'm going to do it without the sand. So I'm pulling the sand out today. So we'll see how we go with that. So sun seems to be going. I'm all dressed up in my long johns today and I've got a j jacket on and everything. Yeah, well I think I had a jacket on yesterday but you know. Uh, yeah. I've got long johns and shorts on. So, uh, so you know. So yeah it's um, and I don't think I quite made, made it obvious last night that um, what's going on with this thing? It doesn't seem to be quite right today. It doesn't seem to be, oh, probably one of the legs isn't quite right, that's really. Okay. Is I'm up on the uh, the foothills here, the, the first step of the foothills. Yeah, so I'm about halfway up from the plain, so when they're saying nine degrees, you know, um, that's on the Adelaide plain. So, you know, it probably could have been like, it felt like we'll probably, well, actually, the actual temperature they said it got, actually got to yesterday was 10 degrees, so we were probably about 8. And if you go up to the, the, the Promised Land or up Belair Way, it's probably, um, that's um, halfway between us and uh, Mount Lofty, so they were probably at 6 degrees, because they also said it was, it was 10, basically, on the plane, and it was like 4, four degrees on Mount Lofty yesterday, so if that helps you... Helps you any sum... <laughs> I don't know, it's funny, funny with the English language, sometimes you get some really, uh, uh, yeah, so, so we'll see how we go. So this is, in a way, it acts like a sponge, it's also a, a source of uh, cellulose, which can be broken down into, into sugar moieties, probably glucose is a basic unit you're probably going for. <coughs> so... So your penicillin probably uh, gets into this, probably needs the co probably probably uses copper as a cofactor, which is probably why uh, copper is the highest micronutrient in peat in a way. So um, but they seem to also like, they can use nickel as well, and nickel seems to be promote the penicillin better, even better than copper does, so maybe that's where part of the serpentine connection comes in. But um, we'll see how we go. But what I'm doing today is I'm just taking the sand out which may be a negative because have we, have we only just it's only realised that the, the fine sand grains seem to stick around the perlite. But what would... I was looking at uh, the, some of those um, photographs that I think Robert Gibson took out of... Um, over in South Africa of Drossel Pences growing on this almost strange looking quartzite 
material. It almost looked like pearl, it almost looked like natural pearl like in a way. So I don't know, it could be. So I'll put that to one side. So make sure we're in shock because there's nothing worse than being uh, slightly out of shot. No, I just had that because got the wind because I had the wind, so that's the perlite. I'm not, not perlite, like the polystyrene. Which is quite good. The one to one seems to be quite good. Okay. Now we're going to add the same amount of this fine perlite which is that we know the organism can actually grow in the, because we want to find out why the organism seems to grow in that. May have something to do with its, its physical capabilities, the way it reacts with the sand. It's probably, it some look, appears to be some sort of physical reaction, whether that's somehow related to why the organism will grow. And that's the course of perlite is acting like a sponge. An incompressible sponge in a way. It holds onto the water, releases the gases. Maybe that's what's wrong with the quartzite sand. It's a, whether you, maybe you need to have water go, to go into the grains to release the gases, but the water can't get into the grains of the quartzite sand because they're too small. Or is the perlite they're large enough for the water to go in and then and that allows the gases to be released? So you make a like a semi-anaerobic to micro-aerophilic environment which they can grow in. They can't do that in the quartzite because they can't the water can't get in there. Uh, I don't think that's quite true because microbes are usually pretty small. And to have 10% interstices from experimentation, that's quite a quite a, a volume size. But then again, maybe that's another part of the um, the K140 sand issue. Because the sand grains were so small, they weren't actually going into the sand grains, they were actually going on the outside. A bit like some of these halophyte species, they're like cubic cells, you know, cube-shaped cells, which grow between the grains of salt in salt lakes, things like that. So what do you think, fellas? <laughs>